The CIA calls it the greatest museum you'll never see. Through the lobby in the CIA headquarters and past the stars for officers who died in missions, including those in the wake of 9-11. A small museum stretches the length of a hallway. The public actually cannot go on a tour here at CIA because it is a secured and fortified compound. You'll notice office doors scattered throughout and those offices are still occupied and mission is being conducted behind those doors. At its entrance, a duffel bag donated by the mother of a girl who died on September 11th when United Airlines Flight 93 crashed in Pennsylvania. This gym bag belonged to the youngest passenger who was on the flight that went down in Shanksville. She wasn't supposed to be on that plane, but had caught an earlier flight. Next to her bag, service ribbons donated by a military officer who survived Al-Qaeda's attack on the Pentagon that same day. He would later join the CIA's mission to hunt down Osama bin Laden. Deputy Director Janelle Nysis says intelligence officers stop here to remember and to learn. There are so many officers that have very little memory of 9-11. We're at a point where we're hiring people right out of college and they were very young or not even born when 9-11 happened. For these new officers, it, it ties the history to people. Statues include the first CIA communications officer to secretly enter Afghanistan. He slept on his equipment every night to protect it. Is this actually what he looked like, or is this just a replica of a random person? It looks similar to him. Um, he's a little taller. <laughs> What's so special about this pair of ragged boots? So these boots were worn by the officer who was with Mike Spann, who was the first American killed in Afghanistan after 9-11. Um, this officer was with Mike um, when he was killed. He was able to get to Mike, um, but not in time. Other artifacts, a saddle from the horse an officer used to ride on for disguise, and a miniature version of bin Laden's secret compound in northeast Pakistan. It was very fortified and secure, so much more so than the rest of the area, so that sort of made us pay attention. They also had this really high wall here on the top terrace. If you have a beautiful view, um, you know, from a deck, you normally don't put up a seven or eight foot wall, but the people who lived on this floor did not want anyone to see inside. Um, they also were burning all of their trash, which our analysts made sure wasn't customary in this area, and it wasn't, and so we realized they were really trying to hide their DNA. The rifle SEAL Team 6 found next to Bin Laden during the raid now hangs on a wall and there's more outside. So we're sitting by an MI-17. What's the significance of it? A lot of people didn't know um, in the weeks, months, and years after the fact that the CIA was actually the first American boots on the ground 15 days after 9-11. And this is really a symbol of that because it is what took our team, the Jawbreaker team, into Afghanistan. Without it, you know, history would look very different. Our visit came days after Afghanistan fell to the group that harbored bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, the Taliban. Where will new objects that result after this collapse go? One of the things about the CIA museum that is interesting but also frustrating from uh, being the deputy director is a lot of the new missions that are happening in real time, we won't be able to put any of the artifacts on display for quite a while uh, due to classification. I have a camera that I would like to put on display from the early 80s and I still can't do it. Remnants of the ongoing war on terrorism. Sasha Ingber, Newsy, CIA headquarters.